Hey everybody, Doug Walker here. Uh, first of all, I apologize if you see uh, some schmutz and stuff on my face. I uh, was just getting done shooting some stuff for Demo Reel, which we are having a trailer for this week. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, but you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about Paranormal Activity 4 and what I thought of it. Uh, and if you should see it, you shouldn't see it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, best way to always go about these is talk about what I thought about the past films. For many of you, this will be repetitious because I've talked about it a couple times, but I'll go through it real fast. Okay, first film... Uh, I felt it was okay, uh, mostly because I was sort of used to these tricks and, and, and gimmicks. I didn't think the acting was that hot. But at the same time, I liked that it was using these subtle tricks and that people were getting scared by it. So I really liked that. I appreciated it more than I sort of liked it. Second one I loved. Love the second one. I thought it was good acting. It was a good setup. Some really ingenious scares. Uh, good characters. I believe the acting. It was a good story. Uh, tied into the first one, great. Love the second one. Uh, third one I thought was kind of like a mix between the first and the second. Some stuff was really good, like really ingenious, and other stuff it's like, oh, come on, we've seen this, and oh, are these characters really that stupid? I'm so sick of these same mistakes, especially when they're so smart in the second one, for the most part. Uh, so I was sort of half and half with the, uh, with the third one. I sort of had some of the most annoying stuff, but also had some of the most genius stuff, so I'm very half and half. And now we got the fourth, Paranormal Activity 4. And, uh, first of all, I'll say, if you didn't get into any other movies, any of the other movies, this one's not gonna sway you at all. Uh, I think they sort of found their formula and they're sort of going with it. Uh, which is kind of the problem with it, is that you are starting to pick up the formula, but... Actually, I'd argue you were picking it up in the third one, but they're still adding some stuff with it. They're still trying very hard to keep it pretty fresh and new, but it's tricky. It's a very hard, it's a hard genre, this finding footage, uh, uh, scary film genre. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what it's called. I don't know what it's called. Uh, it's very hard to keep that new, uh, especially with something that's a film series like this where... You know supernatural stuff is supposed to happen, you know you're supposed to build it up, you know that none of the characters can believe the other characters because then they just either run out of the house or whatever and the movie be over. Um, so those gimmicks get pretty old. Uh, but I don't think it's quite as bad as, like, say, the third one because they do have some likable characters. The girl in the movie is very likable. Uh, the two little boys are very likable. Um... And, uh, well, here, I'll, I'll go into the story real fast. Pretty much, without giving away to, uh, you know, I, I won't give away any spoilers or anything, uh, this family in, well, 2011, I think, uh, finds the, 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 there's these new neighbors across the street, and something happens to the mother. So this boy, this very forced setup, this boy apparently has nowhere to go, no other family, so somehow they hook them up with this family, the people next door, because uh, he's already said hi to him a few times. And this kid, this is one of those great, you know, scary kids in that he doesn't quite go too over the top. It's just the right amount of kind of funny, kind of scary. You know, it, it's kind of like the Damien kid from The Omen. But he, the kid finds just the right in between, or maybe the director does for the kid, whatever. Uh, because, you know, he, he does the little scary looks and stuff, but he's for the most part, talks like a, a real little kid. It, except for the points where, you know, he wants to say something scary, in which case that's supposed to give you the, what the hell was that, or what the hell did that mean? So, it's just the right level. I'm sure some people might think, you know, the kid's a little over the top and we've seen it, but I, I liked him. I, I thought it went okay, you know. It, it was very close to going over the top, but I thought it, st stroke, uh, it, it struck a nice in-between. Uh... And th this kid comes over, oh, of course, weird things start happening, you know, chandeliers start falling, and things start moving, chairs start moving, and all this stuff. And from there, I mean, again, I guess I don't want to give too much away, except for some of the stuff you already know what's going to happen. You know, the, the girl is suspicious, so she has the boyfriend set up cameras in all the laptops, or recordings of the uh, little web cameras, um, in all the laptops around the place. So that's a clever way to keep track you know, to, to do a kind of movie like this, because there's only so much you can film everything, you know, with a handheld camera. I think they even say in the movie, like, dude, are you going to film everything too? And it's like, yeah, we know, we know. It's for the movie, you know. Um, pretty freaking nice camera they have in this movie too. It's like film quality. <laughs> uh, but they're a rich family. Um, so, uh, 
And yeah, and another kind of clever thing is that uh, th this is a clever tie-in. They they usually do some pretty clever commercial tie-ins with this movie, and you probably seen this in the commercial with the uh, oh no, what the hell is it? The Connect, I think. Yeah, I, I think the Connect. Um, they put on the uh, night vision on the computers and on the uh, camera, and you see all the little dots that surround the room. Well, now you can do a lot with that, and they do a, a fair amount. They don't quite abuse it. Uh, they do just the right amount of what you see, what you see moving, what you don't see moving, because sometimes you'll see, like, bugs moving. You're like, are those bugs, or is that a ghost? And then, you know, what was that? What was that moving? What's that? So that's a lot of fun. That's very clever. Um, but bottom line in the story is that things are happening once this kid comes over, and he's also sort of talking to, uh, their son, the son of the, uh, of the family, and is sort of manipulating him, but you don't know what he's saying or what exactly he's doing. So, it's another kind of a mystery. Um, so, with me, again, it's sort of like Paranormal Activity 3, where there's some stuff that's pretty good and some stuff that's pretty lame. Um, but it doesn't quite go the extent of Paranormal Activity 3, because 3 had, when it had stupid stuff, it was so stupid. You're just like, really? You didn't learn from the other movies? Or, you know, like I said, Paranormal Activity 2, they're actually making, for the most part, smart choices. And then 3, they make the same dumbass choices in the first one. Uh, so they make some dumb choices in here, but they're not quite as dumb. But the downside to that, too, is that the scares are also pretty damn good too, but they're not as good as 3. It's like they don't go all the way. They don't quite push it to the extreme that 3 did. Uh, so, so, so sort of take that for what it is. I, I, in my opinion, you can kind of call it paranormal activity filler, uh, because it doesn't quite answer questions. It just raises some more, and yes, so you know, it is leaving it open for another sequel. But, but here's the thing, to its credit, and I do get pissed off they're not giving us more answers, you know, that they are just raising more and more questions, because it's obvious the first Paranormal Activity was supposed to stand on its own. And then the second one, it's like, well, okay, that was a hit, we gotta make a sequel. Uh, you know, but that could sort of stand on its own, too. And then with three, it's like, okay, these are so quick to push out. I, I mean, I'm sure they work very hard on but you can get them out so fast. Uh, we gotta keep a story going, because we have a good, you know, a little moneymaker here. Uh, so I have no idea if they know where this is all gonna end, um, but it is sort of like lost in that every single time you say, no, you know what, I'm done with the formula, I'm done, I don't want to watch it more, blah, 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 they just give you enough to say, well, now I gotta stick around so I know what that is, and it, it's good at that, but the failing of it as well is that it needs to answer some questions too. I know it's weird I'm referencing Lost because I, you know, hate the ending of, of Lost um, because they didn't answer anything, but Lost would give you just as many answers as questions. Every time it would answer something, it would raise another question. And this just seems to be raising more and more questions, maybe one or two answers, and I think we need more answers. Um, but again, uh, they they keep me hooked. The ending of this movie, I'm just like, well, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and it's like, and then the credits roll. It's like, well, shit, I gotta see the next one. I gotta know. <laughs> you know, because that was a very, you know, what the fuck ending. <laughs> you know, even more than the third one. The third one kind of pissed me off with the ending, because, I mean, it so didn't give any answers. Uh, and really, none of the answers, you know, nothing's gonna be answered here from the third one either, which again kind of pisses me off too, but it seems to be, but they're letting on with every film to their credit that it's getting bigger and bigger. And, and I like that, that's smart. It's showing it's getting bigger and bigger, you know, so the next one's gonna be even bigger too, but you don't know how, so it's, it, it's clever marketing. I'm hoping <laughs> they have a good resolution for it. Um, so, again, I, I don't want to give too much away because uh, because they do try to raise more questions with it and stuff. Um, I can't go as far as to say it's just more of the same. Some of it is. It definitely is. You know, we've seen this. But they catch some of it, too. Like, they dive in pretty early with, uh, with the kid and the supernatural stuff. They don't wait too long. There are jump scares and there are... At first, they're not too bad, you know, because it's like, okay, you know, you give it some credit, but then it's like, 
you know, you got the camera there, then the cat jumps on, and we were with a crowd that screamed at everything. The cat jumps on, and it was like, ah! <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys, shut up. <laughs> Don't encourage them to give more jump scares. Because they're cheap, but when they do have real scares in here, they're pretty effective. Um, so I'll give you one last example as to both the strengths and the failings of, of this film. Um, before I tell you who, who probably like it and who wouldn't. Um, there's a scene that's like Hitchcockian genius suspense. I, again, I won't give away too much, but it involves a kitchen knife. And something happens to this kitchen knife, and they draw it out for a good period of time. And you know that something is going, something else is going to happen with this kitchen knife, and you're just waiting for it and waiting for it, and it is such, again, I don't want to give away because it's so good, but it is such an ingenious setup, because every time someone, you know, gets close to this kitchen knife, you're going, oh, oh, because, and, it, but here's the downside, the payoff is not good enough, and when they do give you the payoff, it's too early, you could have held on this knife pretty much throughout the entire movie. Especially when you see what happens to some other characters in the movie. I'm like, you could have used that plot point later. And you could have had people's stomach turning every single time they're in the kitchen. And it could have made people just cringe throughout the entire film every time someone would go in the kitchen. Uh, but they do it way, they give it away way too early and they give it away at just the wrong point and they don't really do anything with it. And it's just like, oh, oh, what an ingenious setup. Um, but that's what I'm talking about, is how it will have some setups that are so, oh, you know, the, the connect thing was ingenious. Um, and uh, there, there's a scene with a kid taking a bath. That, I mean, it's like that stuff, that's the stuff that scares me. I mean, there, there's some, the jump scares, you throw some in the beginning because you had to set up story and you can't throw the scares in yet so you have one or two little jump scares i understand that now stop <laughs> just let the atmosphere build you don't need to have the cat or cut to someone closing a door and it's like that sound is supposed to scare you you know it's they get so lame uh, so like I said, it's not as bad as 3 with the jump scares, because like there's one where like the woman hides in the closet with a mask, I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, these are a little, are a little more clever, but they're still obnoxious. Um, so, in terms of that, who would like this movie, who wouldn't, I say if you really like the Paranormal Activity movies, see it. I, I don't think it'd be like one of your favorites or anything, but I think... It, it keeps you guessing, it keeps you wondering what's going on, it, it has some uh, returning characters too, it's not like just something from out of the blue, I mean, that they got some characters come back, and they tie them in, for the most part, pretty cleverly, but again, there's a lot of, well, wait, when did this, how did that, so, we'll see if it adds up, uh, I'll be honest, a lot of this depends on, what, it, it's just like Lost, a lot of it depends on whether or not they can answer these questions in a satisfying way, or if they answer it. Um, but it, I, I got to know, I, I'll see Paranormal Activity 5 no matter what, I mean, it's like, the fifth one has to do something really, really bad to, you know, cut me from the movies now, which I'm not saying it can't, it definitely can, I mean, it can do something where I just be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm done, you idiots screwed it up, but they're, they're keeping just enough you know, to, to have me come back and sort of see this formula and stuff like that. If you want to see a great video, by the way, check out Brent Floss's, uh, Paranormal Activity, he was a, I think it was like four Mula, and he just points out all of the stuff that keeps happening in these films. It's very funny. And, and it is the fault of the movies, but they're trying to get around it. Some work, some don't. Um, this is definitely not the strongest, but I don't think, I don't think it's the weakest either. I, I think it's stronger than three. I think I could even argue it's stronger than the first one. Um, so, yeah, uh, people who won't like it, anyone that hasn't liked any of the other Paranormal Activity movies, you know, if you're not afraid with doors opening or chairs moving or, 
you know, the, the CG shadows and stuff, you're probably not going to be that scared by this. You know, this is not going to sway you. Uh, I think other people who won't like it, if you're starting to get fed up with just what the hell's going on and not really getting that many answers, I mean, this doesn't answer much, but again, it keeps, it keeps asking some interesting questions about what's going on, too. So, it does have that. But, if you're not interested, you just want to get some freaking answers, this isn't really going to answer anything for you. Uh, so, yeah, that's my Paranormal Activity 4 review. Uh, you can go check it out or not. Hopefully this review has helped, and uh, I shall talk to you guys later. Keep an eye out for the demo reel trailer. Later.